is involved in a startup right now? And who here is not yet involved in a startup? Thank you. My name is Johan, and we're going to talk about this. It's actually kind of secret. Uh, it's, it's the best advice that we have on this, how to win bigger deals smarter. And I'd like to start with thanking you guys, because anyone in here have a lot of things to do? Not too many. This kind of, I'm going to require you to take your hand up. Who needs more things to do? A lot of people need more things to do. That's interesting. I think for a lot of people, they have their business, they have their career, they have their kids, their significant other, their friends, their, their family, their health themselves, and take a full day to learn and reflect and improve. That's a big thing. And I think for me and the other speakers here, it's also... We need to perform and add value to you guys. And I promise that you will have two things out of these 25, 30 minutes. The first thing is, I know that you have some kind of treasure that you're looking for, the treasure cross, where the treasure is, right? And some of you are doing great. Who's doing great here in their business, in their... Not too many. <laughs> I'm not going to ask you to raise the other hand. <laughs> So the thing is, if you're doing great right now, you will bump into challenges. If you have challenges right now, things will turn out great. But one thing that I will give you is a stronger drive to reach that cross, to find that treasure. This, the second thing is that you will get one, two, three, four, five actionable strategies that you can use tomorrow in your business. And if you're not in a business, who's in a job? You can use them in your job as well to kick ass. So you're, it's going to be good. And before I begin, is it okay that I share a few words about myself, about my background? Thank you. My name is Johan and I grew up outside Nacka in Stockholm. I'm an entrepreneur. I've kind of failed twice with two businesses that didn't take off. Uh, and I had kind of a very happy childhood. My childhood was amazing. Up to my first day in school, where uh, I started, I, I guess I was a little bit unlucky. And um, it started out with one bad day, it ended up with me starting to think, ask a question. Who has an inner voice in their head? My, mine said, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Over and over again. Uh, and this, this went on, and the voice over the years, over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight years, it just got stronger and stronger. And I had... Uh, it started saying different things. What's the point of life? Is there a point of life? Uh, and fortunately, I didn't kill myself. Uh, and ha welcome to this happy start, by the way. <laughs> but instead, I had enough. Anyone in here ever had enough? That you quit, you broke up with someone, you fired someone? Who's never had enough? A bunch of only half the room is saying yes. <laughs> and I really had enough. I was fed up. And I became really, really driven. The, the problem was that I was driven by the certainty that I was good enough. By the status, by the emotional drive to have significance and... Outside, fairly quickly, I had what many people would call success. But inside, I felt I was dying inside. Uh, 
And a lot of entrepreneurs that I've learned to know over the years have had the same problem. They have this amazing success over here, but in reality, they feel like shit. Uh, and that's not very good, is it? So I had enough yet again, and then I thought, wouldn't it be much better to instead of feeling like that, still have the hunger, the drive, and everything, but to be happy? And as uh, the American guru Tony Robbins would say, happily achieve instead of achieve to be happy. Who thinks that's a better idea? You have to involve your hands in this presentation, guys. So, this will soon be the only time for the presentation to have real audience participation. So, we will go through a bunch of things here quickly. If you're in B2B and B2C, most of these things will be applicable. We entered the buying journey too late. We reached the wrong type of clients. We reached too few decision makers. We lack sales and marketing integration. And we have no perceived competitive edge. We have too small deals or the wrong deals, and we don't succeed with our cross-selling and upselling. And this might be your struggle. It might not be. What I want you to, in a moment, give the person beside you a high five and discuss for three minutes while we have a song. What? In a moment. <laughs> but that's going to be the song. So discuss what do you want? What's your definition of winning? What's your definition of success? And what's your struggles? What's your definition of success? What's your struggles? And now we can have a high five to your neighbor and we can have the song. So the thing is, the challenges that you mention, was it, it's nice to talk, isn't it? To share your, your goals and to share your, your struggles as well. The thing is, with your challenges that you probably mentioned, most of them won't be the real problem. They will be the symptom. And the, the problem is that you haven't found what we call the five shifts. That is what this presentation is really about. And now we're going to be, we have exactly around 15 minutes. So we're going to be fairly quickly here. Once you master them, you will drastically increase the size of your average client. You will also be able to upgrade your existing clients to what we call partner clients. This we will talk about more. And you will attract your ideal clients, the clients that are better if you're in B2B, your top best 10 clients. The fourth thing is, in the end, you will supercharge your growth, your profits, and really your cash flow. But most important, you will be happier and more fulfilled. I promise you. So the first shift is lack of mental fortitude to win bigger deals. And what does that really mean? So why do I even need to win bigger deals? Some of you are thinking. Who's thinking that? No one. Okay. <laughs> one person. Thank you for being honest. So the, so the thing is, We've done a lot of research. We have a book called The Mega Deals Book that we ha where we have had a doctor, a PhD, for almost one year doing research with the biggest B2B deals, uh, the billion kroner deals in one deal. And what we found is that a lot of super successful B2B companies, they really have less than 100 clients. That is 80% of their revenue. And a company that you all would know, one of Europe's most successful B2B company, they have 20 billion euros in revenue. 20 billion euros in revenue. What's interesting is they have 20 clients that bring home 16 of those 20 billion. Not 20%, you know, everyone is talking about the Pareto principles principle, we're talking about 20 clients, 20 customers bring home 16 billion euros. And the thing is, what usually happens is this. Who in here has a brain? And who's got no brain? Uh, it's four people over there. <laughs> you know, by the way, the funny thing is, uh, when we start talking about this, so here is hell over here in this corner. Past and hell is in this corner. So you 
guess you're unlucky. And over here, you have the future and the heaven, right? So what do you guys think is the strongest drive? The heaven, what we want towards? Who thinks that's the strongest drive? Okay, about half the room. Who thinks the pain or the hell is the strongest drive? Yeah, half the room and one third of the room not answering. Come on. <laughs> There's a guy called Daniel Kahneman who wrote a book, Think Fast and Think Slow. Some of you might have read it. I tried to read it, but it was too long for me. Uh, he proved, he also won the Nobel Prize. He proved that we go two point times more away from what we don't want rather than towards what we do want. And the challenge with that is because everyone talks about why in business, right? You need to have a strong why. But what, what the hell is a why? No one talks about that, do they? Well, the why is the heaven over here and the hell over there. And the last presentation, and I guess a lot of people talk about Elon Musk. You think he has a strong why? You think he has a strong heaven he moves towards and also a strong hell? And what happens and what entrepreneur entrepreneurs do wrong is that they really don't fix a big enough why to their entire business. That's the problem. And what's also a problem is what we call chosen truths. Number one, who in here has a job? Okay, who in here has a career? And who in here has a mission? Yeah, it feels different, doesn't it? Mission. Do you think Elon Musk has a job or a mission? Mission, of course. And the thing is, by training your mental fortitude towards winning bigger deals or towards general success or health, you will come a long way in life. You will need a few things. Number one, you need powerful rituals. Number two, you need a strong, really good peer group. Number three is that you need world-class strategies and methods. And the thing that happened for me is I changed this and I got this off the internet and I executed this. So this doesn't matter, and this really doesn't matter if you don't have this, because if you don't that, who's ever heard, oh, you can't do that? Oh, do you have to work so much? Do you have to have these big ideas? I mean, come on. And the people push you down. That's not a good peer group. You have to lose that peer group. The second shift is you fail to fire the clients that are not a fit. And Anyone read the book called The Pumpkin Plan? No one. It's a good book. You should read it. And I'm going to summarize the book in 30 seconds. There are three types of clients. Great clients, bad clients, and clients that are not clients. And what people do wrong is that they don't... So here is your best clients over here. Here's your worst clients over here. What do people do? They focus evenly over this entire thing. And what you need to do instead is saying, okay, even if you're in B2B or B2C, it doesn't matter. Who's my partner client or ideal client and put all your resources here? That's why this European company have 16 billion from 20 clients. And you know what? It's not in their yearly report. It's not in their communication to their shareholders because people would be what? Scared shitless about them losing their clients. But this is o done over and over and over again. We'll come back to this. The third shift is, and I know that we're going fast, your business has not enough recurring revenue. That was a big thing for me. My two first businesses had no recurring revenue, and some of you guys will probably be in software companies. You say, okay, of course, I have recurring revenue. But if you don't have a way to have really good recurring revenue, you're, it's, it's not going to work. And it's like this. One of the fundamentals of business is to have a business model that creates a strong recurring revenue stream. If you cannot provide what your partner client perceives as value on a regular basis, it's not going to work. And if you're in B2C, you might call it ideal client. And what we call the partner client philosophy it's first to protect and nurture your most important clients. 
The second is to upgrade smaller accounts, smaller clients to partner clients. And the third thing is finding new clients, but only the really best clients. And you say, I'm a startup, I don't have clients. Well, guess what? Then you have to, you have to do this. You have to start here. But if you have revenue, most companies, Warren Buffett once said, I think it's a great quote, the difference between successful people and very successful people is that very successful people say no to almost everything. That's a very good advice. The fourth shift is that you avoid getting really good world-class mentorship. And boy, was that a big thing for me. That was, I would say, probably the main reason why my two first businesses didn't fly. Because it's like this. What got you here won't get you there. If you're here now, you remember that this is the bad corner over here. It's just because our brain works that way. It's not me who invented it. And you're here where you want to be. What you want to do is you want to have someone that has been seen the movie before. Because the thing we talked about, because the peer group thing, that people pressure you down. What do entrepreneurs do and what do leaders do? They say, I can do it. Everyone has said, you can't. You say, I can do it. And then you make the impossible possible. And what happens when you make the impossible possible is what? You create the belief that you shouldn't listen to people. And that's the problem. So find people that, and this is a great place with people that has done this before. They know the two millimeter differences. They know the difference that makes the difference. And you know what? Business has a life cycle just like you. And I learned this from my, my mentor, Keith. And the first problem you will bump into is that you, and this is a simplification, I know. You need traction. The second thing is you get traction and you're doing everything by yourself. So you get exhausted. So you say, okay, I need to delegate. But when you delegate, you really don't delegate, so you abdicate. So then you say, okay, I need control. But when you get the problem of control, you get red tape. Anyone been trying to negotiate something with airline personnel? Anyone ever had any luck? Ah, one person. It's, this, this is the problem when you get too much red tape and then you get entitlement, and then you die. So, but you need someone that's been through this in your industry that knows what you're going through, and not a person that's okay, a person that's world class. The fifth shift is your sales and marketing process is outdated. And we come back to this. The first thing people do wrong is that they spread we have something called a clutter factor. We get bombarded with messages everywhere. The thing is we need to focus our resources to our most important existing and potential clients. And if you're in B2B, you probably bump into this. This is you. This is your customers or clients. What happens is that there are all these experts, users, gatekeepers, Gartner, shared a study recently that there are up to 40 people involved in a more complex B2B decision. 40 people. And do you know who those 40 people are? You need to know. In the me mega deal research, we found the maximum number of stakeholders on the selling side, we found, was 500 people writing, need to sign an NDA to make the deal. 500 people. So if you're in B2B and you're doing more complex sales, you need to reach more people than you're doing. The, the other thing is you want to go from being this walking brochure, being salesy, to going to be educational, to be engaged in the client, give great service, solve the client's problems for real, and in the end, help the client change their operational and strategic agenda. And when you are able to do that with your product or service, they will love you, and they will become a partner client. And the final thing regarding this, right, two minutes and 30 seconds left. 
you have targeted advertising on social media. Facebook did a, have done a great job to really target being able to uh, reach the right people. Personal thought leadership is amazing. Thought leadership today, you can do it very simply, and it's extremely powerful. Smart banner ads, if you're in B2B, IP targeted advertising, an amazing tool if you have fewer and bigger clients. Creative direct mail campaigns, and you say it's 2018, and you say, you mean email? No, I mean direct mail. And this is, this is an email cam uh, direct mail campaign that we did to 200 or 150 e-commerce CEOs. Uh, before this hot summer in Stockholm. It says, it's not smooth to burn a profit of 5 to 8%. Uh, and this can be a, a direct mail piece, not a postcard. You have a website funnel, and in, in terms of a website funnel, we mean that the website becomes part of your entire ecosystem, not just presenting your products and services. PR and influencers. Influence, influencers in B2B, is becoming a really big thing. LinkedIn right now is booming. We have 200,000 views on Swedish for me and my colleague Christina on our personal uh, LinkedIn profile, the, not our views on our profiles, but our reach every month. No paid advertising. Marketing automation and automated webinars, and at the end you have events, roundtables, etc. This is your playground. To summarize, the old way. Letting significance and certainty drive your psychology, like I did. Feeling shit inside, but having success. Not caring enough about getting your business model right. Not having the right recurring revenue. Doing everything by yourself because you have all the knowledge instead of building a high-performance team. Lack of understanding that your business really only need 100 clients to win and spray and pray marketing. The new way is psychology and mindset. Do you have the emotional fortitude that's needed to take your business and your life to the next state? Hyper-focus on segmentation and target market. Have you defined your client segmentation in the right way? A business model that allows you to create partnership with your most important clients. Do you follow the partner-client philosophy? Four, effective sales and marketing processes towards existing and potential partner clients. And are you targeting the right accounts and the right individuals? And five, world-class mentorship. Do you fully understand that having access to world-class mentorship is crucial to reaching the next state? because it's going to be outside your leader's either her or his expertise or comfort zone. And now you have a choice. So, we wrote a book. You're falling asleep at the end here. <laughs> we wrote a book. It's at the printers right now. And you can get a free copy of it uh, for 100 people. We will... It's, it's physical, it's, it's like this. We're gonna send it to you completely for free. It's 100 pages printed. We're gonna have a big conference next week, uh, so we're preparing for that, but after that we will send it to you for the first 100 people. And also, oh, that was it. We have this. So I brought this, this is in Sweden. This is no selling at all, just education about this, 12 pages. If you want to learn more about the things that we talked about, you can grab one of these from me. And I think that's about that. <laughs>